In this formal context, objects are pairs of squares of the same size, and attributes describe how these squares are located with respect to each other. So they may be disjoint like these two, or they may overlap, so they may have an interior point, a common interior point like these two, uh, they may have a common vertex, or they may be parallel, or they may have a common segment, or even a common edge, like these two. Or maybe they don't have any of these properties. So the first pair of squares, uh, they share a point, but this is not an interior point, so they don't overlap, and it's not a common vertex, so they don't have this attribute either. Um, the last line, the last row of this formal context is uh, two squares which are exactly in the same position. So they overlap, they're parallel, they have a common vertex, a common segment, and a common edge. And this is the concept lattice of this formal context. The question is whether this concept lattice reflects all possible combinations of um, pairs of squares with respect to these six attributes. And the attribute exploration is going to help us answer this question. So we will go through the implications of this formal context and check if they're valid in general, if they're valid in the context of all possible pairs of squares of the same size. Um, Okay, so um, in attribute exploration, we have to deal with two, well, actually with three closure operators. The first closure operator is the closure under the implications we have already computed. So our initial set of implication is empty, but it will change with time. So the first closure operator is L of A. Uh, the second closure operator is the closure operator in this formal context. Um, let's say that it's, um, let's denote it by J, JJ. The third closure operator is the closure operator in the entire context, in the context of all pairs of squares. We denote it by II. And so, um, the question that our expert is going to answer is whether a j j equals a i i, or in other words, whether a j j whether a implies a j j. All right. So the algorithm starts with the empty set. Uh, the closure of the empty set under L is also empty because L is empty. So we have to check if the empty set is closed in this formal context, and it is. So it makes no sense to ask if empty set implies empty set, set or of course it does. Uh, we go, we compute the lactically next closed set after the empty set, and this is going to be the single element set, common edge. Now, uh, the L of CE is also CE because L is empty. And uh, the closure of CE, well, let's look at the uh, objects that have these attributes CE. There are only two such objects and they have in common PA, CV, CS and CE. So AGJ equals PA, CV, CS, CE. And at this point, we ask the oracle, or we ask the expert, whether the whether CE indeed implies PA, CV, and CS. This implication holds in our context, but let's check if it holds in general. Well, what this implication is saying is that if two squares have a common edge, then they must also have a common segment. Well, yes, of course because a segment is part of an edge. If they have a common edge, they must have a common segment. Uh, they must also have a common vertex, sure, and they must be parallel. This is true indeed, so the expert uh, answers yes, 
and uh, we add the implication CE implies PA, CV, and CS to our set of implications L. And we go to the next set, the next closed set. The next set closed under L. This is going to be CS. Now the closure of CS under L of A is CS. The closure of CS in the context is, uh, let's look at the object that have CS. We have three such objects and they share also the attribute parallel. So the closure is PACS. And now we have to check the implication that CS implies PA. That is, if two squares have a common segment, then they must be parallel. And this holds. Um, if uh, two squares are not parallel, they cannot have a common segment. So the expert answers yes. And we add another implication. CS implies PA. Well, uh, what happens next is that we choose the next, lectically next closed set after CS. This is CSCE. Uh, but now this set is not really closed under uh, the set of implications L because it contains CE, but it doesn't contain PA. So L of A would contain PA and some other attributes, but PA is lactically preceding CA. And for this reason, the next closure algorithm that we use to compute the lactically next closed set under CS would reject the set CSCE. So we don't continue this line. And the next closure would give us the next set, which is common vertex, CV. Um, okay, so CV is closed under L. The closure of CV in our context is also CV because there's one pair of squares that has exactly this attribute and nothing else. Um, right, so there's nothing to verify here. Uh, no implication to ask the expert. Um, the next set is going to be CV, CE. But again, we're in the same situation as here. Uh, the closure of CV, CE under accepted implications contains PA and so next closure would ignore this set. The same happens with CV CS. It also, its closure under L also contains PA. And uh, so the next set we are going to consider in our attribute exploration algorithm is PA. This is the set returned by next closure. Um, and this set, well, it turns out to be closed in our context because uh, we have these two objects. They both have attribute parallel, but they don't share any other attribute. So PA is closed. Again, no implication here. Well, from now on, I will skip sets like this one, this one, and this one, those that are rejected by the next closure algorithm. I will be writing down here only sets that are closed under our current implication set L. These are the sets that are returned by an exclosure and they are always either intents or pseudo intents of our current subcontext. If they're intents, we're not doing anything. We just go to the next intent or pseudo intent. And if next closure returns a pseudo intent, then we have to verify the implication where this pseudo intent is the premise with our expert. That's what we're doing here. Okay, so the next such set is going to be um, PACV. And uh, PACV is closed because of this object. So nothing to verify. Uh, next, PACVCS. 
we don't consider PA CV CE because it will be rejected by an X closure. L of this set would contain CS and so we won't see it. So PA CV CS, uh, what's the closure of PA CV CS? There's only, there are two objects that have it and they also share the attribute common edge. So here we have PA CV CS and CE. And now we ask the expert whether two squares that are parallel have a common vertex and have a common segment also have a common edge. Well, if this common segment starts in a common vertex because the squares are of the same size, the common segment should in, in fact be an edge. So here the answer is yes. And we have another a third implication. PA CV CS implies uh, CE. Okay, um, then the next set, the next closed set is uh, PA CV CS CE, but it's closed not only under L, it's also closed in the context. This is precisely the intent of the of this object. Um, so that's the closure. Nothing to check here. So let's go to the next set, which is OV, and it is also closed. Um, okay, the next one is OVCV. And the closure of OVCV is the intent of the last object, because this is the only object that has both attributes. So here we have OV, PA, CV, CS, and CE. Now we have to ask the expert if it's true that whenever we have squares that overlap, and share vertex, they must also be parallel, have a common segment, and a common edge. Well, here the answer is no. And the expert gives us a counterexample. So two squares that overlap, share vertex, but, but are different with respect to other properties. So let's say this is one square, and the second square is like this. So these two squares overlap and they have a common vertex, but they're not parallel, they don't have a common segment, and they don't share an edge. This is a counterexample and we add it to our formal context. So they're not disjoint, they overlap, they're not parallel, they don't have a common vert, they do have a common vertex. Um, and that's it. No common segment and no common edge. Well, before we continue, uh, let's erase what we have here, but let's keep in mind the implications we have already accepted. Okay, so the next set will be OV. B A C S and its closure in the context is well it's again the intent of the last of this object. It's no longer the last object. The one before the last. So it's um the closure is O V B A C V C, S, C, E. And now I ask the oracle if it's true that whenever we have two squares that overlap, parallel, and have a common segment, they must also have a common vertex and a common edge. And again, the answer is no, because 
This is a counterexample. So we just have two squares that are parallel. They have uh, common segments. They overlap, but they don't have a common edge and they don't have a common vertex. So this is one square and this is the other square. So we add this to our um, formal context. So these two squares overlap, they are parallel, uh, but that's it. They don't have a common vertex, they don't have a common segment, and they don't have a common edge. Let's continue. So the next set we'll have to consider is O V P A C V. The closure of O V O V P A C V includes C S and C E. O V P A C V C S C E. And we ask the expert if if it's true that when two squares overlap, are parallel, have a common vertex. They must also have a common edge and a common segment. And in this case, this is so. So we say yes. And we accept, we add a new implication. OV PACV implies CS and CE, common segment and common edge. Okay, so next, the next interesting set is going to be the eye disjoint and it's closed in our context uh, then disjoint and common vertex well we don't have any object in our case in our context that has these two attributes that's because it's not possible to be disjoint and still have a common vertex. So the closure of DICV is M. We ask the oracle if this is so, and this is so. So we add this implication, DICV implies M. Um, next, the next set is, the next set closed under implications from L is DIPA. Uh, the closure of DI and PA is just DIPA. We have this object. Nothing to ask here. Um, then DIPACS and the closure of DIPACS is again the set of all attributes M. And indeed, it's not possible to be disjoint and have a common segment. So this gives us a valid implication, the I, the A, C, S implies M. Next, the I, O, V. Yeah, that's it, the I, O, V. Well, again, the closure is M and indeed it's not possible for uh, two squares to be at the same time disjoint and nevertheless overlap. So we add implication DIOV implies M. And uh, that's it. So the next closed set is going to be M and we finish at this point. So what, what have we done? We have computed the canonical basis which includes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven implications. And this is the canonical basis of this small, well, relatively small context, but it's also the canonical basis of the context of all possible pairs of squares with respect to these six properties. We have also added two counterexamples to implications that were valid in a smaller context, in our initial context. Um, 
This means that the concept lattice has also changed. Um, this object which overlaps parallel, it must go here. So it's, um, what attributes does it have? Overla overlap, common segment and parallel. Okay, looks like I forgot to put a cross here. Okay, now this is the concept lattice of all possible pairs of squares in terms of how they can be located to each other. Well, of course, we don't have uh, all possible pairs of squares as labels, but the structure of the concept lattice will remain the same even if we add any other pair of squares. Every other pair of squares will have a place in this lattice. We'll have a node where it fits absolutely. 